what's up? Zach back at it here again today for Down South Racing, and I just want to give you all a super quick intro. I don't want this to be a long video or anything like that. So here's a rundown. If you don't already know about my car, scroll back some videos, but basically more or less the car is an on three low mount turbo car. It, it's a got custom headers just basically we had to drop them down extend them just a little bit to fit comp 62 65 oilless ball bearing turbos uh, it's got a ported boost proof boss 302 intake manifold by 1320 junkie jason texera super cool guy look him up awesome thing for turbo cars Four fuel system ID 1300 injectors. It's got a full Keltrak slash BMR front and rear suspension. It's on F14s. It's got a carbon trunk, motion race works, uh, shoot on the back. You know, that's the basic gist of the car. I can put a full mods list in here, but if you scroll back one video, I actually just went over everything on there. So it'd probably just be easier for you to do that. But nonetheless, took the car to the track for on the first time with a trans braking two-step setup. So here's what I went with as far as that goes. I went with a 6R stager trans brake and bump box and a watt box, N2MB watt box to do the two-step. So two-step and trans brake are activated by one button. Then the other button is a... Um, the bump uh, i went with the gauge mount uh clock spring uh, pass-through kit and so all the wires are tucked in the steering wheel and stuff like that so it's super clean i'll put a uh, picture in here of what the steering wheel looks like also went with a carbon steering wheel it's got some alcantara and uh, it's got a white strap on the top and it's got white stitching you know to match the car um so this is my first time ever trying it out and long story short, it went amazingly. I set the rear shocks on nine compression, 11 rebound. Those are Kelly Aikens, custom valve Vikings. And I set the front struts on about 80%. So what I done was take them all the way to full stiff and then backed them off about a half turn because it's about two and a half turns to full. So four out of five right there is about 80%. Car went a one, three, nine, 60 foot off the trailer on, so, the two steps set at 3300 rpm uh, car builds like four or five pounds of boost on that setting it goes 139 off the rip had the boost controller set on 16 pounds on this rip the da or the first rip the da was about five six hundred and we didn't have a headwind next rip as you'll see the car did et a little bit better but it actually mile an hour a little bit lower and i had the car turned up so next rip we left at 3400 on the two step built just a little bit more boost cut a 134 but i tried to run 18 pounds of boost and unfortunately in second gear the car hit over boost and so it dropped it from 18 all the way back down to 12 and then fed it back in going down the track as well as fighting an 18 mile an hour headwind. But nonetheless, these are my new personal best guys. Uh, went 908 at 151 and the quarter. I believe it was 581 at 120 in the eighth, but I had mile an hour one higher than that. I think the car definitely can go eights if the motor doesn't let go. Uh, we're also going to do some uh, trans tuning on the car as well. It was really struggling with the two three. I wouldn't say really struggling, but it was struggling with the two three shift. Uh, so we think we might have the converter locking up a little bit too soon. That's another thing. It's got a built trans. It's got a circle D two B converter. So you know stuff like that. This is all in the tuning. This is my first time ever out with it. I am super stoked with it. Uh, I should mention also the DA in the last pass was like sixteen hundred. So it went up like a thousand and we had an 18 mile in our headwind. So I was really pleased that the car actually did ET better, but that was all in the 60 foot. It ended up going a 134 versus a 139. But theoretically speaking, the car should have picked up a whole tenth and went 901. But worse air, headwind, and um, the overboost protection killed the car a little bit. So that's why it only went three hundredths faster than the 911 off the trailer. Uh, next part of the video, we took the car to race proven performance in Harrodsburg, Kentucky and put it on the dyno. Had some problems at first, not gonna lie to y'all. The car actually blew the wastegate clean off the header. Luckily, we were able to put it on a lift and get it fixed. Then we put it on the dyno on about 17 or 18 pounds. It made 954, 895 off the rip done a back-to-back -back pull and then it made 963 903 i tried to turn the car up but midway through the pull the the controller had a line come off of it at least partially so it ended up making the exact same boost about peaking in the mid 18s and holding you know mid 17s something like that um so super cool to see that also you'll see the graph at the end of the video we did not have a tack signal hooked up to the car so the rpm is off about 500 because i revved the car to 8,000. 
dyno graph only goes to about 74, 7500. So just keep that in mind. As we know, dyno numbers are, you know, they're cool to see, but they're not really worth a whole lot. How the car performs on the street and on the track is, you know, what really matters. But they seem about right for what, you know, the car. I think it makes probably around about a thousand ish on 18 pounds out on the street and a little bit of air, a little bit better air. It's also, you know, 80 degrees in the dyno room. We didn't have a huge correction factor for that or anything. This was a dyno day with over 30 cars. My man Jared at Race Proven was kind enough to let us throw it back on the dyno. So I was just trying to get in there and get out without making any major changes, anything like that. But I want you guys to enjoy the video. Thanks for all your support. Continue. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And please like this video. Leave a comment down below. Peace.